School between candidates for trustee of Fairfield and Wabash Townships. I'm Samantha Tiki. Our co-moderator for this evening is Jefferson student Ethan Harrington. The debate is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Greater Lafayette and WLFI TV 18. We are also collaborating with WJEF to broadcast the debate live this evening. We'll conduct this as two separate 30-minute debates for each township. The debates, the candidates, excuse me, for Fairfield Township will start. After a short break, the candidates for Wabash Township trustee will face each other. The candidates have agreed to the same set of rules governing these debates. Each candidate will give an opening statement followed by questions from the moderators. Candidates have two minutes each to respond to each question in a 30-second rebuttal before we move to the next question. The debate will end with closing statements. Our timers will make sure that we adhere to the agreed times. The candidates have not seen these questions in advance and have agreed not to bring prepared notes for the questions. We ask our audience here at Jefferson to please remain quiet throughout the debate so we can concentrate on hearing from the candidates in their own words. We drew names from a hat to determine who would give the first opening statement, and April won that drawing, so I invite her to begin. Hello, thank you for putting this on TV18 and League of Women Voters. Um, my name is April O'Brien, and I have been married to Trent O'Brien for 26 years. We have four children from the ages of 25 to 17. My parents, Tom and Terry Camp, have been active um, in the community for years. Um, I'm qualified to do the trustee's job because of my experience managing a small business as well as um, being invested in our community. My husband and I manage Sacred Grounds Coffee Shop, and um, it's been, or it's on Wabash Avenue, and we've been down there for 20 years, and a lot of things have happened down on Wabash Avenue in that 20 years, and we are honored to be a part of that. Um, I've also formed nonprofit, um, and we, I put that on hold because I saw what was going on within the trustee's office. And so I began to go to board meetings about a year ago, and I also um, attended a training session for trustees, and I was the only candidate that was there. And so because our coffee shop is located right next door to the Fairfield Township office, I had a front row seat of what was going on. So as trustee... I will open the doors, making the township assistance more accessible, as well as connecting the clients to other resources within the community, giving a hand up to help reestablish self-sufficiency. Also, transparency is a crucial component of any elected official who is put into office. They are there to serve the people, not themselves. I will open the records to the public, and I will be working hard with the board to make decisions. I will also restore a good working relationship with the Lafayette Fire Department. They are currently um, serving our um, outside the city limits, the unincorporated area, and we are behind three years. Thank you. Monica. Hi, I'm Monica Casanova, and I'm running for the Fairfield Township Trustee Office. I am a current board member of the Fairfield Township Board. I'm a Lafayette Jeff grad and Purdue grad. I have a social studies education degree and two master's degrees in library science and public history from IU. Currently, I work as a case manager at a community mental health center where I work with individuals in their home to help them develop life skills and connect them to resources in the community. My family moved to the area back in 1993 from Southern California. Originally, I was born in Mexico. At, at that time, my family relied on support, social services. We relied on free and reduced lunches, WIC uh, for my mother when she was pregnant with my little brother. So I understand that families, even when all the adults in the household work, will need assistance from time to time. And I believe that the township office is a great asset to the community. And I can't wait to help the township office, help those in need. I believe that I'm uniquely qualified, professionally and personally. My platform relies on transparency, accountability, and service with integrity. 
Thank you. First question is for Monica. How will you build and maintain trust between yourself and the township residents you serve? I think that's a great question. The first, the first thing I do is to post those uh, public finances, the finances of the township office. They should be, they are public information, should be posted both online and, and in person. Opening the office right away. Uh, having office hours consistently so that the people who need help can have access to the assistance that the township can provide. Having readily available public um, board meetings and having them consistently at the township office and having, having them regularly. Thank you. April, how will you build and maintain trust between yourself and the township residents you serve? I agree. We need to open up the doors and have open records to the public, as well as adopt um, new statutes, um, which are standards that are posted on the website, so people can um, find out what it is that, um, how they can qualify for assistance. And so um, I will also be working with the board to create internal um, controls so that there will be... um, set in place uh, checks and balance so that my board will be able to hold me accountable and and therefore um, we will be working hand in hand and um, including the public and if they have questions we will answer them in a timely manner and actually immediately and so Monica any rebuttal no I agree I think having um records readily available to the public to inspect. Um, I would say that internal controls are in place. They're just not being followed. So I would make sure that those are enforced and followed. Mm -hmm. April, do you have a rebuttal? No, I definitely agree. Um, I believe we need to make the board active. And um, as far as we need, as a trustee, we need to be working with our board because that is um, how we can be transparent as well as they have a lot of good input. Your board is valuable. And so I believe with including the board, there will be more transparency as well. All right, our second question is, the township office doors have been locked since the beginning of COVID. What commitments will you make to maintaining regular office hours and, be, and providing township assistance? And this will be going to April. Okay, can you repeat the question? Yeah. What commitments will you make to maintaining regular office hours and providing township assistance? Well, first we will um, publish on the website. So there is a website that the public can go to and and see what the office hours are. Um, We will have quality staff. I'll have quality staff that is trained to, um, um, to welcome the clients when they come in. And I believe all the clients that come in Um, They deserve to be treated with kindness and compassion and integrity. And so that will be one thing that I will be doing. I will be training my staff to um, essentially be be the hands and feet of the office. Uh, And to Monica, what commitments will you make to maintaining regular office hours and providing township assistance? I do make the commitment to keep and maintain regular office hours to have them posted publicly, both on the door, uh, on the website, and on social media so that the public is aware of when those hours are available and when applications are being accepted. I do believe that... um, who works at the township office should have a, a servant leadership mentality. They're there to serve the public and should treat everybody with respect and dignity. Uh, I make a commitment to provide assistance to those in need and to update the eligibility standards so that clients or applicants are aware of what's expected of them, what kind of documentation they need to provide with them at, at the time of their visit. All right, uh, April, your rebuttal. 
I agree. We just make, we need to make sure that the the office hours are posted, and um, to close them um, is detrimental. And uh, I brought a family in, and they needed assistance with burial, and they were unable to get in. And they actually cracked the doors. The staff cracked the doors, and um, just w- my experience was very cold and. Uh, All right, our third question will be to Monica, and it is, how many hours per week do you plan to devote to to being a township trustee, and will this be a full-time position for you? Yes, this will be a full-time position for me. I commit to committing full-time. This will be my career for the next four years. I have given notice to my employer. They're aware that this is the commitment that I'm willing to make. Um, So, yes, this will be a full-time 40-hour position for me. All right, April, how many hours per week do you plan to devote to being a township trustee, and will this be a full-time position for you? Yes, this will be a full-time position. Um, I do run a small business, and so when I began to go to the board meetings, um, I realized I needed to start staffing my um, our restaurant, which is Sacred Grounds. And so I have been slowly staffing it to prepare so that I can go in and work with... Um, other trustees, and there is so much help um, for whoever goes in. Um, for people, they want to see this often office opened to give township assistance. And so I have prepared um, myself going in, and I am staffed at my coffee shop so I can be there 40 hours. Okay, Monica, any rebuttal? I have no rebuttal. Uh, April, would you like to say anything else, I guess? Uh, if not, uh, our fourth question is, uh, the township board is primarily responsible for the township budget. How will you work with the board and develop the budget? And would you, uh, would you empower your board to review and approve township expenses to April? This is for me? Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, the board is to um, review, modify, and adopt the budget that is presented by the trustee. And so um, after reviewing the budget. Um, Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Um, How would you work with the board to develop the budget, and would you empower your board to review and approve township expenses? Yes, I want the board to be, to oversee um, my daily operations of the office. And so monthly when we meet, because we will be doing monthly board meetings, I think that's crucial, especially right now since it's Um, in the state that it's in, and so I will um, present what has the the receipts and all of that for that month, and um, I I feel that it's crucial for you to work with your board. Um, I helped bring uh, the Crossing, which is an alternative school, and they currently serve 60 students in um, Lafayette, and one of my roles was to build the board. And so I understand the importance of a board. They are there to guide and to direct, to direct, to direct, to direct, direct you. <laughs> and um, they are there and they have skill sets that, and they're connected in the community. So to not include your board is, is not wise. And so I look forward to working with a board and um, I can work with anyone. But I appreciate my board. I will appreciate my board. And so. Okay. Monica, how will you work with the board to develop the budget? And would you empower your board to review and approve township expenses? Yes, absolutely. I ran a unit of government as a public library director. So I know firsthand how to work with a board and how to develop goals together, um, how to reach those goals together. So definitely I appreciate the the wisdom and the asset that a board, um, a wise board, can bring to the to the unit of government. So, yes, I would definitely empower the board. They are another set of eyes. They provide oversight to the township office, to the trustee. So, and again, it goes back to transparency. It's being transparent with the board and the community. The board represents the community. They're also democratically elected the representative of the community that they serve. So 
yes, transparency, showing receipts, showing expenditures, keeping your board up to date monthly and at every turn so that they're aware of what's going on and can help the trustee make wise and reasonable decisions day to day. All right, April, uh, do you have a rebuttal? No. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, Monica, would you like to have a rebuttal? No, I don't have a rebuttal. <clears throat> Monica, this is for you. Do you believe the township should resume payments of $100,000 to the Lafayette Fire Department, even though the township is not required to make these payments? Yes, absolutely. I think it's really harmful that the township trustee has withheld those funds. There is a contract in place and the trustee has not respected or observed that. So that would be one of my first priorities would be to restore those funds to the Lafayette Fire Department so that they can get the safety gear that they need, whatever it is that they need, so that they can continue to do the excellent job that they do. Mind you, they, are, they continue to serve the township, the unincorporated areas, even without payment, and they will continue to do so. But I think it's imperative on the township office and the trustee to show that respect and provide those funds for them. April, would you like me to repeat the question? Pardon? Would you like me to repeat no, the question? Okay. Um, I agree as well. We need to continue that contract, and we are three years behind. I have met with Fire Chief Doyle, and as well as PAC, which is the political action committee within the fire department and um, the fire department's union. And I have spent time with individual firefighters to, um, to listen and discuss um, the needs of the fire department. And, and so I do look forward to um, restoring that relationship and I'm thankful that they have continued service and um, to the unincorporated area. So uh, with that 300,000 I know right now, um, they need uh, a second set of gear. And so I believe that that is important. Our, our firefighters go in, they serve our community, and if they, do, if they go to a fire two days in a row, or um, two times in a row, um, they have to go in with wet gear. And, and their gear carries um, carcinogens. And so I believe that this is a shame that this has happened. Um, and because of COVID, the cost of the gear has gone up. And so where we were looking about 350000 it's now about 450000 and there's a year wait. Monica, do you have a rebuttal? Yeah, I've met with Chief Doyle, too, a couple times and talked about projects, um, things that he wants to invest these funds in. Um, and I'm also interested in restoring that relationship with the fire department, and I completely support them. April, do you have a rebuttal? No. Okay. April, this is for you. Your township has a budget of about $700,000 per year with paid staff. What experience do you have managing a business or organization of this size? Okay, we have, I do um, run a small business, and um, so I'm capable of managing staff. And um, currently I have, I think I have six on staff, and so... I believe that, um, that you need to create an environment that's positive, that people want to come in, and um, that we can work together. Um, Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes. Uh, what experience do you have managing a business or organization of this size? being the $700,000 per year paid staff? Um, I know what it means to turn in a budget and um, to manage and... Um, <laughs> I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Monica? <laughs> Samantha, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, I can. The township has a budget of about $700,000 per year with paid staff. What experience do you have managing a business or organization of this size? 
Sure. So when I was library director at Monticello, I, I was director for five years, and we had an annual budget of over $600,000. I had a 13-member staff, so I have that experience. Um, I also worked for the Allen County Public Library System, where I was the public services manager for 13 buildings, including 15 direct staff and 150 d staff indirectly. So I'm very knowledgeable about managing staff uh, at all levels. I am also knowledgeable as far as working with, with budgets and boards and making sure that the staff is aware of what's going on. Um, training staff is one of my passions and empowering them and being empathetic to their needs, but making sure that the institution and organization I work for is first. So, yes, very much so. I do have experience managing staff. I have experience running organizations. April, do you have a rebuttal? Yes. Um, I have looked over um, the budget for the last four years, and I have been working with Bill Jones, who is a trustee in Tippecanoe County um, Township. And so um, I am, for a year now, I have been in training to um, be able to um, understand um, the budget and what, where the different um, line items where things need to um, be applied to. So I have been learning that side of the trustee's office. Monica, rebuttal. I, and even though I do have that past experience, I'm still always learning. So I've met with Bill Jones to uh, at least once, if not spoken to him more on the phone or over email. So I'm, I'm constantly learning because every unit of government is different. So even though I do have experience, I am still a learner, always willing to learn. And learning is something that I'm also passionate and care about. I do that every day. And that's what I, I train my clients on. All right, next question is for Monica. How will you manage township assistance? So the township assistance, first, you have to look at the eligibility standards. And the eligibility standards basically outline how applicants can qualify for assistance. Those standards have not been updated since 2019. Mm -hmm. I'm currently working with the board. I am on the board. I'm working with the other board members to update those standards because some of the income guidelines and other guidelines that we're using are completely out of date and no longer meet the, the needs or the reality of our, of our clients. So it puts, ap it puts applicants, clients who need the help, really uh, out, of, out of luck here. So we need to update those standards, uh, and I want to make the application process as easy as possible because it's very onerous, but it I understand that it has to follow a statute and what the State Board of Accounts sets out. I'm always cognizant of that and following the rules and making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. But I am definitely always have my eyes set at helping those in need. So, But it always comes back to those eligibility standards and setting those guidelines up, making sure they're updated and true. April? Um, yes, I agree. We need to open our doors so that township assistance can be accessible as well as adopting the new standards because the website hasn't been updated. And so um, we also... Um, can you repeat the question? How will you manage township assistance? Um, so I, I look forward to training my staff um, I believe that everyone deserves kindness and compassion. And so when they come in, I think it's important for the staff, the case managers, to listen and to ex assess the needs. Um, if we are unable, because there are standards, um, and some people may not qualify, but I believe that we can be the coordinating, um, that case manager can help coordinate um, other resources within the community. And I, I believe that's an important um, aspect of, of the job. And so um, I, look, I look forward to working with people as they come in. Um, I do believe that um, I was raised to help people, and I'm very thankful that, um, that I have, I've been privileged to walk people through 
life, like hard situations. And so I understand the importance of just being patient with people and, and understanding where they're coming from. All right, thank you. We've reached the end of the question period of our debate. I would now like to ask the candidates to deliver their closing statements, and we'll begin with April. I believe that I am equipped to do the trustee's job. I was a concerned citizen and I watched what happened in the trustee's office. And because of that, I began to get involved, um, going to board meetings um, way back in, way before, I think September is when I went to my fir first board meeting. And one of my experiences, and this really is why I decided to step in, is I had um, a neighbor of ours who had had a heart attack, and um, she, was pregnant and they, they took the baby a month early. And when we tried to help her get assistance, she was denied. And I actually went to the board meeting to, to ask, you know, what is going on in the township? And I was very thankful. There was a lady, her last name was Hessian, and I don't remember her first name, but she was part of LUM. And she actually directed us to go to LUM, and we walked her through the process of getting back on her feet. This single mom... Um, after having a heart attack and a C-section, went back to work two weeks later. And, um, and I'm, I'm proud of her for doing that. But I think that we need to have these doors open, we need to treat people with compassion, and we need to understand where they're coming from, as well as being transparent with the board and the public. Thank you. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this important candidate debate. And I want to thank the members in the audience who are both here and listening to us. I appreciate that you're educating yourself on the candidates. Um, I'm excited to be running for the Fairfield Township Trustee Office. My passion is to help people. As you can see, I have a government ex experience in running a local unit of government. I know what it's like to work with the board and have a shared goals. I know what it's like to uh, do budgets. I am ready to restore the role of the township in the community and help develop that, that trust again. In my recent experiences as working for LUM and as a case manager for a community mental health center, I understand what kind of resources are available in the community and the type of things that people need. I'm running on a platform again of transparency, accountability, and service with integrity. If you have any questions, you can follow me on Facebook at Casanova for Office. Thank you again. I want to thank the candidates for their participation this evening. To find out more about these candidates and all the candidates on your November ballot, we encourage you to use the League of Women Voters online voter guide at www.vote411.org. Please stay tuned as we resume our debate with the candidates for trustee of Wabash Township. We'll be right back after a short break. <laughs> 